Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today I'm going to talk about a preset called a random transform. Uh, before I head into tutorial, I would like to mention, uh, recently there was a very huge change in animation nodes that will break up some linkage or causing errors or whatever in old Blender file or preset library. As a fix, I have updated my preset library to 2.3.2. Uh, this is still a pre-release. I think I'm going to do some more checkups and or improvements, but in general, I think it should work fine on 2.91 now. So I suggest you to keep your animation nodes version and the preset library up to date. Perhaps you have downloaded the animation nodes earlier and think it will be fine, but the truth is that sometimes it can get two to three updates even in a day. So at some point, you should really update your animation nodes if possible. So let's start. So this tutorial will be intentionally separated into two parts. Uh, one part I'm going to, in the first part, I'm only going to talk about this random transform node, the basic usage of that. And in the second part, I'm going to talk about the way to avoid the intersection between all these kind of objects. So here is a very simple setup of these nodes. And I'm just uh, using this random, tra random transform node to generate the locations. So the matrix matrices is basically a combination of locations, rotation, and scales. And uh, I'm putting this list length into the instances. This list length is basically a synchronization of the list length in the input. And finally, I'm outputting into the object matrix output nodes to define the location and rotation and scales of all these objects. So basically kind of simple setup. So I have uh, originally a model cubes and if I can hide them in instancer. So now I only have one instances by default. So you can increase this list length. So now you're generating all these kind of cubes and each of the cubes have a completely different random transform as you can see. So the sides, rotations, and the locations are all different. So here are several settings I, wanted to, I would like to, to have you know. Um, first thing is the seed. The, if you just change the seed, everything becomes so different. So there's no connection between seed to seed. So sometimes if you would like to transform something, uh, you, but if you don't like the result, you can just uh, play with the seed. It's the simplest way. Uh, the detailed kind of manipulation here is, you can see all these kind of cubes are just uh, crowded to each other. So you can turn on this translation so they will be separated apart. Uh, but it is still not the way to avoid the intersection, but the intersection will only be talked about in the second part. Uh, next thing is rotation. By default, the rotation is 2 pi, which is 6.28. But you can just, uh, if you don't want to have rotations, you just clean up to 2, 0 kind of things. But by default, 6.28 is kind of enough. Another thing is the scale. So the name is probably not very obvious. It says percentage range of base. But I've actually made a tutorial which is talking about a node which is called the minimum and the maximum. Uh, basically, it's a way to generate all these kind of variances, and it's especially important when you are working with scales. Or it, it's one of its important functions to generate the various scales. And here is what it does. So you basically have a y, which is called a base. So the base is just uh, determine the average size, but the x is talking about a variation. So if you put that to zero, all these kind of cubes will have the same size actually. But if you turn on this range, then it will have almost a 100% difference compared to the average. So it's basically a percentage variances uh, of all these cubes. So basically, smaller the x, more similar scales they will be until they will be completely the same. Or if you increase, then the variance becomes very large and it's probably too much. So. By default, it's 0 0.5. I think it's kind of a good number. And then there's some other functions. For example, evolution is just a way to evolve all this kind of object. And this is the reason why you need animation nodes sort of things. Because if you're using uh, normal Blender's ways to transform all these kind of objects, so you go through the object, it goes to transform, and you have this uh, randomized transform, uh, you will only have a panel, and you can change all these seeds. You can also change locations or whatever stuff. But the problem is you cannot evolute. And then once you click elsewhere, the panel disappear and you have no way to animate them anymore. This is why using animation nodes is kind of very fun and very easy, very procedural, whatever. So the evolution is 
basically comes from the uh, location, rotation, and scales. So you can rot you can only evolute, you can, so in each channel you evolute one parameters, location, rotation, or scale. Um, I usually only work with location, but you probably would like to evolute the rotation at some point or scale at some point, I'm not sure. Another thing is the translation factor. So previously I've mentioned that the, the, this, in this translation, you increase this translation and everything has been separated apart equally in all these three axes. But at some, at some cases, I probably would like to have objects more spread on the X axis more than the Y axis. So what you can do is there is a factor. So if you don't want to have it to spread on Y axis, you just put this Y to zero. Then their Y axis value will be completely the same. Uh, and if you would like to spread it more on axis compared to the Z, then you just increase this factor, which is kind of very handy. So beyond to that, there's if you hit, select the node hit you, and then you go to the socket settings. There's some hidden sockets uh, talking about the rotation. So this is similar kind of the same principles. So instead of generally control all three channels of rotations, X, Y, Z, uh, you can actually control the individual channels. If you would like only to rotate the Z, then you just put these Z rotations to 360 degree. Or put uh, Y channels at 360 degree uh, or so on and so forth. You can definitely play with that. Another thing is the scale. So some, instead of uniformly change all these scales, you can definitely only increase the X axis or only increase the Y axis or only increase the Z axis if you, this is what you are looking for. So sometimes it's just generate whatever kind of weird things. So the general functionality has been discussed. Next step, I would like to talk about something which is might be a little bit more practical. Here you will realize there is a matrix list input and I haven't discussed that yet. So what we can do is you just can distribute the matrices. And uh, I want you to firstly realize that we're generating about 28 cubes through this method because the list length is 28. And you can definitely increase the count or decrease the count completely procedural. Uh, what happens if you put this matrix into matrix list, then I'm only generating nine cubes instead of 33 because uh, the matrices I'm generated is three times three, which is nine. So what it means is if you are putting anything into this matrix list, then the amount of matrices you input will override the list length that you set earlier. So you only choose one from these two. And so now, no matter how you actually increase this list length, it will not affect your anything. And, uh, but if you change all this kind of X or Y division, then what does the effect to something? Okay, so now let's just get a grid. And if I turn down this translation, then you will realize that all this kind of objects is nicely sitting on a grid that you have generated. So let's take that into steps so that we see kind of more clear about how this cube is located. Okay, so, so now we have about the 25 cubes nicely setting at locations. And if you would like to turn on this translation, then you can see a little bit, even a little bit of variation makes it kind of much interesting. And you can definitely turn on these rotations. So what's kind of practical use for these kind of things? So here we're generating grid on XY plane. So one way to think is there actually, you can actually generate kind of, um, you can generate a city using this method. Nicely, we have all these kind of cubes. So how to generate a city? So assume we're going to generate a city, how to, how to generate a city. So if I turn on this translation, we have variant shape, okay? But uh, some object that does fly. As I mentioned earlier, if you don't want to make the object fly on z-axis, then you just turn down these z factors. And let's make the translation factor the same on x1 and y, so that will just fly the same on these two axes. So now this object can kind, of, kind of just spread it out. Uh, again, the avoid the intersection part will be discussed in the second part of the tutorials. The next thing I would like to discuss is the rotation. 
So when we have the cities, not all the cities are full of looking at the same direction. Sometimes you just have a little bit different rotations. And in this case, you cannot turn on the rotation because all three axes will be rotated. So you just turn on this rotation on the axis, 360 degree. Then you get all these kind of variances. Uh, as for the scales, if you want, I like only to grow the scales on y uh, on the axis. Then you just turn on these scales. So now I have all these kind of buildings. In reality, what you actually also should do is probably put this the origin of all these objects that goes to the bottom, so that it only grows upside, not the downside. But these are the things that you can manipulate. And again, by changing the seed, it just gives kind of very interesting results. So this is one way to use these things. Another way of thinking, actually, is that uh, forget about all this kind of thing I just discussed. Just using it's kind of more the most default city. What you can actually do is to make a kind of asteroid thing in the universe and increase a lot of list lengths. And all these kind of cubes can inherit the modifier of subdivision and the displays. And you just like ask this object to fly around. So there are many different possibilities to manipulate them. But if you have watched the other my tutorials like parenting, in animation nodes or whatever other stuff, then probably you probably already know how to manipulate as as well. And so far I will stop here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.